Nearly every program we write is largely defined by its relationship with its input and its output. Input is pretty much anything we put into the program for it to work on, and output is whatever the program gives us in return. Usually we're not going to write programs that do the exact same thing every time they're used. Usually we're going to write programs that process that input in some way and have the output affected in some way by what the input was. Input can come from a lot of places though. Very often we're dealing with user input. We ask the user to directly input some data. To take a simple example, think of a basic word processor like Notepad or TextEdit. The user presses some keys and in return, the program shows the letters that were pressed. The input is the keys that were pressed. That's the user input. And the output is the letters appearing on the screen. Our code is responsible for translating that keyboard input into that observable output. Input doesn't have to be from a human though. When a web browser, for example, retrieves some website from the internet, that's the input into some code that knows how to render that website on our computer screen. The content of the website would be the input and the display of the website on the screen would be the output. Or we could also have files. We have programs that load files from the computer into our code and display those files on our screen. So we can have lots of different kinds of input. And similarly, our output doesn't necessarily have to be to the screen either. Imagine, for example, you have some code that writes or saves something to a file. In that case, the file itself is the output of your code. That's what it's generating. Or otherwise, imagine you have some code that plays some sound. Then the sound would be the output. So using this general workflow, we can start to think of some pretty complex behaviors, actually. For example, your phone is a computer. When it rings, it's taking as input the information that a call is being received, and its output is for the screen to turn on to show who's calling and anything else. So at a general level, the input into the code is whatever exists before the code is run, and the output is whatever the code produces as a result of running. It could be contents on the screen, it could be files on our hard drive, it could be some sound coming out of our device, or it could be lots of other things. When we write code, we'll even find that we're constantly dealing with input and output between different portions of our own program as well. The output of some portion of code that we write becomes the input into some other portion of code.